Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Hallelujah. Anybody excited about this morning? Hallelujah. Our Savior lives. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior is yet alive. We are so excited to be in worship on this morning. It's so good to see you all. You all look beautiful. Share and like the stream this morning. If you're on virtual, let somebody know Wesley is alive and we are ready for worship on this morning. Amen. Let us go before the throne of grace. Father, we thank you this morning for another day of worship. Thank you for allowing us to wake up and to come into this space and to worship you. Lord, today we specifically honor your sacrifice and that you are yet alive and that you have gotten up from the grave with all power in your hands. So Lord, we say thank you today for your sacrifice. We say thank you for the blood shed and that you got up. You didn't stay there. Our salvation hinges on today. So we are so excited to be here to give your name reverence, glory, and honor. Lord, we thank you and we ask that you move today and you set free and you deliver and you make someone's load a little lighter today we've come to celebrate so let us be free in you let us be free in worship let us be free to lift our hands and lift our voices and clap our hands and give your name reverence because it is yours all the glory belongs to you it doesn't belong to anyone else so we promise that we will give it all to you. It is in your name that we pray. Amen. 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 And amen. Amen. Thank you. 
fullness. Oh, yes, I'm enjoy Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, enjoy Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, I'm feeling mighty happy. I'm feeling mighty fine. I'm enjoying Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, I'm enjoying Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, enjoy Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, I'm feeling mighty happy. Feeling mighty fine. Enjoy Jesus, hallelujah. Oh, yes, I'm enjoying Jesus, hallelujah. Oh, enjoy Jesus, hallelujah. Yes, I'm feeling mighty happy, feeling mighty fine. Enjoy Jesus, hallelujah. Everybody, come down, hey. Amen. Let us stand this morning as we reaffirm our faith by use of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of our God. This time we'll have our scripture reading followed by our morning prayer. Amen. Amen. Our scripture this morning will come from Isaiah chapter 53. Verses 1 through 10. Who has believed our message and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him. Nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds, we are healed. We all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. Hallelujah. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for prayer this morning. Let us get settled in our minds and our spirits and really focus on the goodness of God. Hallelujah. Not just today, but every day. How wonderful he is. How great his sacrifice was for us. Just think about it as we go into prayer. Hallelujah. Father, we say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Those two simple words are simply not enough to convey our gratitude for who you are to us. 
Father, thank you for being our Lord. Thank you for being our Savior. Thank you for being our risen King. Lord, we honor you today for simply being Lord. Before you've done anything, before you've given anything, you are Lord. And so we worship you simply because of who you are. Nothing else, just because you're Lord. Lord, we lift our hearts and our worship to you because you you rule and you reign. You are the king of kings. You are the Lord of lords. There is no one else like you. You are the righteous one. You are holy. Hallelujah. No one can compare to you. No one can stand beside you. No one can dethrone you for you reign. And we simply thank you for that simple fact that you reign, that you formed us us, that you made us, that you are the creator, that you are the giver of life. We simply thank you for being Lord. Hallelujah. That's enough. Before anything else, you are Lord. And we give you honor and reverence this morning. Father, thank you for keeping us from danger seen and unseen. Thank you for protecting us. Thank you for keeping us even when we didn't want to be kept. Thank you for making ways. Thank Thank you for clearing pathways. Thank you for making plans for us that are to prosper us and to give us an expected end. Father, thank you for your provision. Thank you for your omnipotence. Thank you that you're omnipresent. Thank you that you're all-knowing. Before we can see what's coming, you've already seen it and you've already made a way. So we say thank you this morning. Hallelujah. Lord, thank you for healing our bodies. Thank you for delivering our souls. Thank you for saving us for we were all wretches undone and there are things that we are still doing that you give us grace for and you grant us mercy. So Father we say thank you. We don't take for granted the activity of our limbs. We don't take for granted the fact that we can speak. The fact that we can see. The fact that we can hear. The fact that we have mobility. Lord we say thank you this morning for a cars to drive, for food to eat, for shelter, for peace, for joy. Thank you for being our all and all. We give you glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for being our father. Lord, thank you. Some of us have suffered this week. Some of us have been tormented in our minds, but thank you for being a mind regulator. Thank you for fixing our hearts. Even when we weren't obedient to you, you have blessed us and you have graced us hallelujah lord thank you that even when we became distracted and we didn't do the things that you wanted us to do that you still granted us mercy and you still kept us and you still protected us father we thank you hallelujah you are so worthy today you are so worthy today now, Lord, as we've come to celebrate your sacrifice, we say thank you for deciding to stay on the cross. We say thank you for the blood shed. We say thank you that it is for the remission of sin. Father, we thank you for salvation. Hallelujah. We thank you for saving us. We thank you for thinking of us before we were even here. Hallelujah. You knew that we would sin. You knew that we would fall short and you sent your son to die for us. Thank you for your sacrifice. Hey, thank you that he didn't stay there and that he got up with all power. Hey, all power. Hey, and because he had the power, he gave us power. He gave us authority. So say you are a liar and the blood of Jesus is against you. He shed his blood so that I might have life. The blood of Jesus against you. Lord, we plead the blood. We plead the blood over our families. We plead the blood over our homes. We plead the blood over our bodies. Father, thank you for the authority this morning. Hey, thank you for the authority this morning. Thank you that you've given us dominion and power. Hey, hallelujah. Father, we're grateful. Father, we're grateful. Hey, hallelujah. Hey, 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 hey.
it is in the name of Jesus that we pray. It is in the name of Jesus that we seal this prayer and we give him praise. And we give him praise. Come on. And we give him praise. Hey, uh, hey, no one else is more deserving. No, no one else is more worthy. Hallelujah. Come on. He's your God this morning. He's a yours. He's a your savior this morning. Hey, hallelujah. We worship him in the beauty of holiness. We worship him in the beauty of We worship him in the beauty of holiness. Oh. We worship him today. Oh. Woo. We worship him this morning. Father, we thank you and we love you. It is in Jesus' name, amen. I know I came to give the announcements, but I sure help you with the praise real fast. Don't y'all fool me now. I know it's Easter, but he's been good every day and every week. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Take your seat if you can. Oh, I can still wait a little longer. Somebody better catch him while he's yet in the room. You see, Doc, it gets easy to look around and not know what's going on. But when you've been blessed by God, you don't have to look around at someone else's praise because you've got a testimony for yourself of where God has brought you from. You have your own testimony about what he's done for you. And I don't have to look at my neighbor and wonder what's going on. Hallelujah. We thank God for the presence of his spirit that rests with us in this service on this, this morning. We thank God for his spirit that rests with us in this place on this morning. I greet you all in the name of he who has risen, Jesus who is the Christ. And I say happy Resurrection Sunday to each of you. So good to see all of you here on this, this morning. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to get through these announcements. I'm going to try. Look now, if I'm going to stop these announcements, y'all better not play with it. You better do it for real.
This is a reminder for all of you that this is the week 34 by contingency fund for those participating members. Uh, please see your envelopes or see Sister Diane Arnold, who is with us on this morning. We thank God for her again being with us on this morning. So please see your envelopes or see her during or, or see her after service if you need to know where, where you are or to make any sub, submissions. Right. The 135th session of the Norfolk District Conference will be held on April the 5th, this Friday, at St. Thomas in Norfolk, beginning at 9.30 a.m. on Friday. I pray that I'll be able to see some of you there. I'll be preaching the communion service, so y'all pray for your pastor. I didn't ask to preach and was hoping that this cup would be on somebody else. Uh, but please, if you are available, please come on that morning. We start at 9.30 with our communion worship, and then we go uh, into some business for the, for the afternoon, uh, and then at 7 o'clock p.m., we'll have our empowerment service featuring Bishop Warren, Mat Bishop Warren Matthew Brown, a former bishop of the former Mid-Atlantic II and current Mid-Atlantic e Episcopal District. So I promise you all that district conference will be blessed after communion, all right? So after communion, it's going to be blessed. So yeah, but... I need, I, I need about four of y'all to come and um, jump up and down, say amen, help your pastor out so I can go and do what I got to do. Amen. And I also want to thank those of you who follow, who traveled with me during this week. For those of you I saw on Monday, those of you who, who participated in service on Wednesday, uh, and then those of you who followed with me on Friday, there's been a lot of preaching and a lot of service that's going on. So I thank you for... Uh, journeying with your pastor around the greater Hampton Roads area. Bible study will continue this Wednesday at 6 o'clock p.m. We are in 1 John chapter 2, so please read 1 John chapter 2. I'm going to try to get through as much of that chapter uh, as we possibly can, but read the, the entire chapter in case we do get through all, through all of it. So I look forward to seeing each of you at Bible study on Wednesday. The Women of Wesley will be having Women's Day on April the 14th at 11 o'clock a.m. Notice there is a slight service time change for the 14th, okay? Uh, and Sister Jackie Knight, First Lady of the Red Oak Grove AME Zion Church, will be our guest speaker on that morning. So I'm looking forward to hearing uh, what thus saith the Lord through her to us and especially to the Women of Wesley. Amen. Our Family and Friends Day, we're still highlighting it. Family and Friends Day will be on April the 21st. On that Sunday, we will have a we will have one service that will begin at 1 o'clock p.m. Everybody say it with me. 1 o'clock p.m. All right, so uh, we'll have our 1 o'clock service. So please invite your family and your friends. I have to, uh, Because the committee has... Um, nudged me, gently nudged me. I did have someone coming on that Sunday for Family and Friends Day, but I was gently nudged, Brother Yor. And you know what I mean by that, Brother Yor. I was not gently, but more so pushed, uh, coerced, moved uh, that that I should be preaching on that on that afternoon. So I will be preaching on that afternoon. I, I, I called my friend and told him I I'd bring them back. So uh, when I'm when I go on, on va vacation, amen. Cause y'all take them, cause y'all take them too. Yeah. So when I go on that, I'll have them to come then. But I will preach on 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 that Sunday. Uh, we are in teams. Y'all know what you've been asked to do. You know who your teams are, and. Uh, I'm glad you showed up, Sister, Sister, Sister Smith, because I've got a message for you. I'm coming. I'm coming for you. I'm gunning for you. Amen. She's going she to get me out to service. <laughs> Let's see what's next. Is that it? That's it? Oh, amen. Um, while I'm here, let us, I know it was last week, but I want to do it publicly. Let us wish Sister Desani a happy birthday. She's here with us. 
She turned 21 on last week. Amen. So we wish her a happy birthday. Do I have any other birthdays this week coming? Anybody? Oh, I got to wish my good friend and brother, the Reverend Adrian Warwick, whose birthday was on yesterday. So we wish him a happy birthday as well. And I also want us as a church family to keep the Hood Chapel Amy Zion Church and the Reverend Sam Warren and Dr. Andre Warren in our prayers in the loss of his father. Uh, he will be funeralizing him on Wednesday at, at 11 o'clock at J.T. Fisher Funeral Home in Portsmouth. So uh, please let's keep the Warren family in our prayers. I had a chance to visit with him on Friday. Uh, he's in good spirit, but we, we, we know that loss can be heavy on us. So I want us to keep him, his wife, and his entire family in our prayers. Amen. I think that's all I've got at this time. Let us prepare for our moment of giving. Oh, oh, okay. While we're preparing for that, thank you, Chrissy. See, when you weren't here last week, I was lost. Like a ship without us, without a sail, tossing to and fro on the restless seas of time. But I'm so glad that you're here today. Everybody's been given a, a ticket. So here at Wesley, we like to do a little fun, special things. So there's a how many of y'all old enough to remember Easter baskets? <laughs> My sister right here said, oh, yeah. Now, I don't know what's in it. You know, back in the day, you used to get the Easter basket. You get that brown bag with some fruit and candy at the bottom of it. They give it to you twice. At Easter, and they give it to you at, at, at Christmas. But there is an Easter basket that I have not seen that I don't know what is in it. Uh, but the who is this a lake council i'm going i'm gonna put it on on lake council wants to give away an easter basket so you've been given so you've been given a ticket amir i need you to cut this stream real 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 quick real real quick just five seconds So you've been given a ticket. So when at the end of service, after the sermon, um, we will see who gets the Easter basket. Amen. And I'll give you a hint. I do not have a ticket and don't want one either. I want to see who, who, who gets it on this morning. Let us prepare at this time for our, for our moment of giving. Let us pray. God, we thank you for this moment of giving. For we know that giving is a part of worship. We pray now, God, that you bless the gifts that we're to receive, that they may be used for kingdom building down here on earth. We pray now, God, for the one who had the mind to give but did not have the ability. But let them know that theirs is also in the kingdom of heaven. Bless now the gift and the giver. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our trustees and ushers are coming at this time. For those of you who are joining us virtually and for those of you who are joining us in person, there are a few ways you can join us in this moment of giving. First, you can find us via Givelify by searching Wesley Union Amy Zion Church. There you'll see our logo on his mission, and you're able to join us in this moment of giving there. Or you can use my, my preferred method, Cash App. You can find us there with the handle dollar sign Wesley Union, all one word, dollar sign Wesley Union. And then you're able to join us in this moment of giving there. Or you can find us via mail at 708 Johnson Avenue, Norfolk, Virginia, 23504. So we've got Givelify, we have Cash App, and we have via mail. We're grateful at this time for each and every one of you who are joining us in this moment of giving. It is because of you and God's continued presence and spirit with us that we're able to continue kingdom building right here in the Huntersville section of Norfolk. So we say God bless you and we pray heaven's richest blessings on each and every one of you. Let us stand. All things come of thee and of thine own have we given thee. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee all. 
Amen. We thank God for the gift and the giver. We're going to ask Tay to come back and give us another selection, then we'll have our message for this morning. God sent his son, they called him Jesus, he came to love, heal and forgive, he lived and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know. And life is worth the living just because he lives. How sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the pride and joy he brings. But greater still, the calm assurance this child can face on certain days because he lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know who holds the future, and life is worth the living just because he lives. And then one day. I'll cross the river, I'll find life's fine, final war with pain. And then as death gives way to victory, I'll see the light of glory and I'll know he lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know. Because he lives, all oh, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know oh, who holds the future. And life is worth the living just because he lives. One last time, let's sing it together. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, yes, all fear is gone. 
because I know oh, who holds the future and life is worth the living just and life is worth the living just 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 because he lives now if you know he lives you want to clap those hands and celebrate jesus hallelujah And life is worth the living just because he lives. Truly, that ought to be our testimony and that ought to be the center of our praise on this Resurrection Sunday that we have life because he lives. Amen. I want to thank our praise team this morning for leading us into worship in such a spirit-filled and, and heavy way. And I'm going to try and make sense this morning uh, of this resurrection story. Now I only want to read a piece of a, a piece of a text, and I want to try to I'm going I'm going to get through it all, but I only want to read the, the first piece of it to set the scene for us for the purposes of our preaching. Um, Turn with me, if you would, quickly to John chapter 20. John chapter 20. Gospel of John chapter 20. And I want to single out verses 11 through 15. 11 through 15. John chapter 20, verse 11 through 15. Very familiar resurrection text. And it's recorded as such. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been. One had the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not recognize that it was Jesus. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Let us pray. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope and my will to be lost in thine. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. I want to hang my hat on that 15th verse if I can this morning. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. For a few moments this morning, I want to preach from this thought, from this question. Is there any good news? And if I had to add a subtext question to that, it'd be, where is Jesus? Where is Jesus? Beloved, life 
has presented to us so many, so much bad news. We see it in our local news. We see it in our papers. We see it in our neighborhoods. We see all of the bad news that is or that is around us. And though in this country, even as a people, we have experienced a change in leadership in a very historic way, electing the first woman an African American vice president. We still see racial inequality and in, injustice, judicial partiality, pro, police brutality, and extrajudicial killings. We've witnessed, even in the midst of some good things, there's still been some bad things. We've witnessed the public killing of numerous African-American men and women by those who have no regard for human life. Misinformation and disinformation have become mainstream. Things have not been what some people would call, Diane, good. And we as a people have been waiting for some good news, something to uplift our spirits, something to give us hope for today, Reverend Taylor, and strength for tomorrow. Yet even in mid-2024, though we're not in a pandemic still, we still face problems. Lives are still being lost. Injustices and inequalities still exist. Finances are still funny. Relationships are still rocky. And we are left wondering this morning, is there any good news? When will the bad news stop? And when will the good news start? I've had enough troubles and tragedies. I've seen enough struggles and strifes. I've been let down enough and experienced too many losses. I've had enough setbacks and stumbling blocks. I've heard enough bad news. Is there any good news? There has to be something good that we can share amongst each other. There has to be something good, Chrissy, that we can share in the midst of so much bad news around us. The celebration of the arrival of Jesus into Jerusalem was filled with jubilation and excitement. The long-awaited Savior foretold by the Old Testament prophets had finally come. This Savior, this, this chosen one by God, sent by him to save the people from their sins had finally showed up. His arrival marks the fulfillment of this prophecy and brings with it a sense of hope for each and every one of us. Yet the joyful nature of his triumphal entry last week would quickly change this week. After spending a week with his disciples, telling them of what was to, to come, instituting the Lord's Supper, and commanding us to continue a perpetual memory of it until his coming again, Jesus, the, the, the joy of Jesus' arrival is quickly replaced with the bad news and sorrow of his death. Jesus is arrested on false charges, tried in a kangaroo court, and his life is traded for, for the release of a ruthless criminal. From the excitement of his arrival, many are now very anxious, Mia, to see Jesus die. The mood has changed. The belief on him who has come in the name of the Lord is now over. The same people who had waved palm branches to him six days ago and yelled Hosanna in the highest are now crying crucify him. This paradigm this morning should remind us here it is not to get too wrapped up in the hype of, of, of the crowd. For the same crowd that celebrates you one, one day will stand around watching you crucified the very next day. They'll laugh with you one day and talk about you the very next day. Jesus here in this paradigm shift, he's whipped with a cat of nine tails, a whip designed with spike endings to pull flesh from the body with every blow. He's mocked and he's spit on and he's ridiculed. He must walk the long walk of the Pine de la Rosa up to the hill of Galgotha, while others who once believed him now sarcastically jeer him to save 
himself. He's forced to carry his own cross by which he must suffer the most painful of deaths in the current historical context. He's hung between two criminals of which one is not convinced that he is God. A thorn, a crown of 72 thorns is placed on top of his head. Four and a half inch nails are driven through his hands and through his feet. A piercing in his side allows water and blood to stream down. This once celebrated redeemer is now being mocked as the king of the Jews while being put to a merciful and shameless death. And after six hours suspended between earth and glory, Jesus dies. When he died, the Bible says that, that the earth reeled and rocked. When he died, it says that it says the veil of the temple was ripped from top to bottom. When he died, Adrian, it said the sun refused to shine. When he died, brother, you're the centurion smote himself on the chest and said, surely this must be the son of God. And just like that, y'all, the savior, Jesus, the one who was to redeem the world from their sins had died. Within one week, the one who had come held as the king of kings is now dying on a cross as the king of, of Jews. The nature of for the distress and the grief is evident among the people. While some watched as spectators, others watched with pained hearts and broken and broken spirits. Peter, so frustrated by his denial of Christ and pained by his death, doesn't even bother to come to the foot of the cross. Disbelief was the order of their day. I've got a question here. How could it be that the one who promised us that he'd be with us always is now being prepared to be buried in a borrowed tomb? How could it be that the one who fed thousands is now gone? How could it be that the one who said he would never leave us or forsake us has now left us? Beloved, Jesus is dead. And as quickly as he's arrived, he's now dead. Their protector, their provider, their deliverer has died. Imagine the mood among those who had believed in him. What must they be thinking? How are they really feeling? Without Jesus, they are in fear that his fate will soon become theirs. They are scattered in presence and broken in spirit. His body is taken down and placed in a borrowed tomb. And just like that, King Jesus seems to be no more. The word on the street is that this man named Jesus, this self-proclaimed son of God, had died a shameful death by what many would call a modern day lynching. And in our text this morning, as we spiritually survey the events of this, of this weekend, such is the same sentiment that can be said about how many felt then. Jesus was arrested and tried, sentenced to death. They watched him beat, dismayed and distraught. They see their savior dead. Already living in a world that was hard for them, now they are forced to do it without the one whom they had walked with and the one whom they had witnessed up close and personal, his divine power. Reality without the Redeemer was their new normal. And though filled with sorrow, they must now mourn and move on. But now there's a problem here. Jesus is missing. They witnessed his death. They saw his crucifixion or his, or his hanging. They saw, they say what would be a modern day execution of his body. And now he is missing. The bad news of his death 
just got worse. As hard as it is to already have to cope with life without Jesus, they now cannot properly mourn him with a traditional burial, which is their custom. Imagine, if you would, this morning, Wesley, their anguish and their grief. You already have to deal with the death of a loved one, and right before the, the viewing, you go to the funeral home, and somebody tells you that the body is not there. They're already distressed and, dis and discouraged, but now the opportunity for closure has been taken away from them. And John describes for us the scene here in chapter 20. Still struck by the freshness of grief, Mary Magdalene is brought to believe that somebody had taken Jesus. Panicked and shocked, she runs to tell Peter and the other disciple whom Jesus loved. And surely, as they arrive running to the tomb, Jesus is not there. There is evidence that he was there, but he's currently not there. And for them, this makes a bad situation even heavier. They had just found new life in him. And now that new life had been snuffed out by his death. And even more, his body is now missing. And by verse 11, we see Mary Magdalene standing in front of the tomb, distraught and, dis and dismayed. And as she is there crying, the Bible says that two angels appear. Confronting her about her state of being, she tells them she's crying because she suspects that someone has taken the body of Jesus Christ. And at that very moment, the text says that Jesus appears, but she is not aware that it is him. Her feeling of grief, watch this, has caused her to not see the glory of Jesus Christ. Can I help somebody right here? Sometimes we're just like Mary, Mary Magdalene, where we allow our hurt to hinder us from seeing God's healing. We allow our troubles to overshadow God's triumph. And we allow our consternation to diminish his consecration. Her pain in this moment makes her blind to the fact that Jesus is right there with her. Beloved, can I help you again? Don't get so distracted in your distress that you miss the delight that comes when Jesus is in your presence. I got to say it again. Don't get so caught up in your troubles that you miss that Christ is still in the midst of us. But watch this. But notice the conversation that she has. For here we find what I believe to be the tension of this text. She says, sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you've put him and I will go get him. Too dismayed to believe that Christ had risen like he said he would. Good news for her is simply, watch this, to still find Jesus dead. Mm. She's accepted that Jesus is dead and what would satisfy her is not to find him alive, but simply to find his body. Oh, can I help y'all one more time through this sermon? Can I pull the car over if I promise to keep it to keep it running? And we're guilty, just like Mary Magdalene in her dialogue of being content with dead things. She wants to find him, but she's looking for him to still be dead. This exposes the scandal of internal conflict that she's dealing with. But Wesley, this is not good news. A dead Jesus is not good news. A buried Jesus is not good news. But as the text continues, after he calls her by name, she recognizes 
that it is Christ. Is there anybody here this morning that's glad that his voice is irrefutable and his voice is undeniable? That his voice is both revealing and re relieving. And just like that, her feeling of distress and dismay turned into relief and re rejoice. The sight of the glorified risen Savior was enough to turn her pain into joy. Just when she thought that finding a dead body would have been good news, Jesus shows up and gives her a better story to go tell. He gives her a better narrative to tell others. And he instructs her to go and tell the good news to his dear, dear disciples. And in verse 18 is where we find both our lesson and our challenge for this Resurrection Sunday. It says, Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. In the midst of terrible events, and unfortunate circum circumstances, unforeseen death, and unshakable loss. She now has some good news to tell others. Things weren't as bad as it did seem. The Savior that they thought was dead is yet alive. The unbearable burden of loss they thought they could not bear has been lifted through the raising of our righteous re redeemer. Beloved, this is our lesson today, that no matter how much bad news is around us, no matter what the skeptics and the cynics believe, no matter what the naysayers and the troublemakers start, there is still some good news. The emptiness of the grave is evidence that there's still some good news to be told. A living savior is fulfillment of the scripture that the Messiah must suffer and die. And then three days later, he'll rise from death. And beloved, that is the good news. The affirmation of Christ's resurrection must be confirmed by our witness. Without us witnessing his rising from, from the dead and his going before us, the good news of his return cannot be shared with those who need to hear. And the word of his return is not just for those who followed him to the end, but it is for all of us even Peter, who shamelessly den denies him and does not come to see his Savior die. Even human failure on times like these is not enough to keep the good news away from God's people. We can be assured, Kenny, as the reader of this text, that even though we have failed Christ, his resurrection is still for us too. Even though we fail to believe him, even though we've fallen short of his glory, even though we are not worthy any of any of the time, even though we, like the two thieves, are guilty as charged, his death and his resurrection has become the pardon for the offenses that we cannot pay. His resurrection is for us too. And our challenge today is to do like Mary Magdalene in verse 18 and go and tell others that the tomb is empty and that Jesus is alive. She goes as Jesus tells her, and tells the disciples about the reversal of this bad news. And beloved, our challenge this morning and our challenge every day is simple. Like the women in this text, we must put our faith into action and tell the good news about the resurrection of Christ. Telling the world 
marvel men and women, boys and girls, saints and sinners, that there is still good news. We must be willing to not only believe it in our hearts, but we must confess it with our lips that an empty grave is there to prove that my Savior lives. And I know there's been a lot of bad news. I know it seems as if there's no good news to tell. But I've just stopped by on my way home to tell somebody that you can still tell some good news, that there is still good news to tell. And we should be witnesses that there is still some good news. We should stop telling bad news all the time and tell some good news. And to make it relevant, I want to tell you a, a story. As I was preparing this, Reverend Taylor, I was reminded of my Uncle Spike. Every time he sees me, he the first thing he says to me is, Reverend, tell me something good. And my response to my uncle is always, I ain't got no good news. But now, this morning, on this Resurrection Sunday, I feel slightly convicted, Needham, because though there is a lot of bad news that I can tell, I realize that I still have one good piece of good news. So Spike, if you're watching, I want to apologize for all these years of me telling you I didn't have any good news. So if you will, let me revise my previous statement. I believe today that there is some good news. And the good news is that the bad news was wrong. I know you heard how they beat my Jesus, but there's still some good news. I know you heard how they hung him high on that old rugged cross. But can I tell you, there's still some good news. I know you've heard how they put nails in his hands and how they put nails in his feet. But can I tell you, there's still some good news. I know you heard how they pierced him in his side until the blood came streaming down. But can I help you this morning? There's still some good news. I know you heard how the sun refused to shine and how the moon dripped with blood. But can I tell somebody there's still good news? I know you heard how he gave up the ghost. I know you heard how they laid him in Joseph's tomb. But can I tell somebody that there's still good news? I know you heard how they sealed up the tomb with a large stone. I know you heard how he stayed there all night Friday. I know you heard how he stayed there all day Saturday. I know you heard how he stayed there all night Saturday night. I know you heard the bad news about Jesus dying. But can I tell you that there's still some good news in the words of that great prophet Rufus. I can tell you something good. Can I tell you something good? He died. Oh, yes, he died. But the good news is that he didn't stay dead. The good news is that the tomb is empty. 
The good news is that my Savior lives because they tell me that early on Sunday morning he got up with all power in his hands and because he got up I've got good news to tell I said I wasn't going to tell nobody but it's so good I can't keep it to myself and the good news is God sent his son they called him Jesus he came to love heal and forgive he lived and died to buy my part an empty grave is there to prove my savior lives because he lives i can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because he lives my life is worth the living just because he lives do i have a witness here today that says i know the good news of the day i know there's good news to tell and i made it up in my mind wherever i go i'll tell the world that god's not dead but he's yet alive i wondered this morning do you have good news i wondered this morning do you know that jesus lives do you know the good news of today that he died but he rose again and because he rose I can rise from my troubles because he rose I can overcome death because he rose I can overcome problems because he rose my future's still good say yeah Everybody standing. Yes, sir. There's still good news. Everybody standing. Everybody standing. Yes, sir. The question was posed Is there any good news? And luckily for us today, we've come to celebrate the good news of Jesus Christ. And that news is that he's not dead, but he's yet alive. But beloved, there's even better news that because he lives, he's canceled sin for us. Because he got up, he defeated hell and the grave. And for us, that means now we have access to, to, to the salvation that was rendered by his death and the victory that comes with his resurrection. So maybe you're here this morning and you got a lot of bad news. You've heard a lot of bad news. But as a matter of fact, you've got some bad news to tell right now. As a matter of fact, you got some bad news this week that's still on you. But I've got some good news for you. That Christ is the answer for the bad news in our lives. And his death and resurrection starts this process of us being able to share in the good news that Resurrection Sunday brings. So maybe you're here this morning. 
and you got bad news and want some good news, I dare you to give God your heart, give the preacher your hand, and take on this good news of a resurrected Savior and tell the world that Jesus still lives. And he lives because he lives in me. Maybe you're here this morning and you desire prayer. The Bible says the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous avails much. Let us pray with you that God will continue to strengthen you along this journey that we call life. That for you is called is for you. Or maybe you're here this morning and you are looking for a church home. I tell you, look no further. For Wesley Union is the going church, knowing the good news for the soon coming Christ. That be you. This call is for you. Our sisters come this morning to stand in the gap for someone who is going to have surgery. So we're going to pray that God would avail themselves to her in this, in this situation. We're also going to be praying for little Arias, grandson of Sister Joseph, who will be also having a medical procedure on Thursday to alleviate some of the health conditions that he's facing. So we're going to pray for them now and pray that God's will be done in the midst of all that. God, we thank you. We thank you, oh God, that there is still good news. The good news that you died, but you rose again for us to be able to share in your resurrection power and share in this gospel of you coming back for us again. So God, we thank you for that. And we rest even in this moment in that good news. And because we have that good news, oh God, we come to this throne of grace, humbly asking you to show up in the midst of the troubles of our, of our lives. We pray now, God, for my sister and for my little brother, that as they face uncertain health challenges, that, oh God, that you would deliver for them the good news, oh God, that you'll show up in the midst of their surgeries, show up in the midst of their operations, but not just show up there, but show up amongst those who have been charged with giving them care. God, we pray that you'll guide the hands. We pray that you'll guide their minds. We pray that you'll be the instrument of healing to work through them in times such as these. But oh God, don't just heal and touch those who will be tasked with care, but give these families, oh God, a renewed sense of hope. Give them a renewed sense of faith, oh God, that they may lean wholly and trust on you. But the Bible says we lean not to our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge you and you will direct our paths. Direct us, O oh God, in the way that you would have us. Continue to be with us through even through challenging times that though there's bad news around us, that we still have good news. And the good news is that because you live, healing is still available. Because you live, deliverance is still possible. Because you live, salvation is free. Because you live, mercy is great. So God, be with them now in the midst of their bad news. And deliver unto us the good news of your healing that only you can do. We submit them to your care and we place them in your hands because there's no safer place in the whole wide world and in the hands of Almighty God. Keep them, O oh God, and they shall be kept. Bless them and they shall be blessed. Save us all by your grace and we shall be saved. In the name of he who has risen so that we might live again, Jesus who is the Christ, 
And the people of God said together, Amen and Amen. Salvation and glory, honor and power unto the Lord our God. For the Lord our God is mighty. Yes, the Lord our God is omnipotent. The Lord our God. He is wonderful. Again, we thank each and every one of you for being with us on this Resurrection Sunday. And we pray that as you leave here, that you will understand that there is still some good news. Amen. Now, y'all going to get me in trouble. Come on, bring them tickets up here. I'm getting me in trouble. Playing games, a chance in the church. Y'all should have played the lottery. If you were going to play a real game, just go on and get it for real. If you're going to do it. <laughs> Let's see. Now, y'all, I don't know what's in here, but I'm going to tell you. I, I, oh, I can't look. Did, did, did they get a ticket? So everybody got a ticket but me. Um, Amira didn't want one. Okay, Amira, come here, Amira. Yeah, because see, if I do it, the saints of God will promise that the pastor rigged it. And y'all know y'all pa- now y'all know how much y'all pastor loves games of chance when it comes to bowling. So you know I ain't gonna rig. I ain't gonna rig nothing. They, even though they did rig it last night, y'all pastor didn't win no money last night. So y'all. Jesus got up, but 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 my but 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 my money didn't come up last night, and I thought surely if God rose, that I could surely I could raise something, right? All right, all right. I I, I tell you, if I wasn't a preacher, I'd have been a comedian. All right, who got your tickets? Now, if the bishop called me, I'm sending him to Adrian. All right, because if you get a, if a new pastor is here next week, y'all will know why. They done lifted my appointment and sent me somewhere else, and here drawing tickets in the church on the day the Lord got up. All right, where you where your tickets at? All right, the number is nine five two. Y'all got that part? Three, three. Uh Uh-oh, somebody getting close. Zero. Is is that you? Come on up here. 952-330. Now, I wanted to... Now, listen, we got to check it first now. Come on, let me... Come on, let me teach you something. Whenever you're playing games of chance, don't just take nobody's word. You got to check the number. He got it, he got it. Amen. Let's give him a hand. You got it. Go on and sit down now. You got it now. I'll take it back though. Teach teach y'all one valuable lesson. Always check the number. And don't don't sleep your number either. All right. I see. Some of y'all ain't been to the casino. Y'all ain't gambled before. But that's good. Stay that way. Stay that way. Stay that way. Amen. Thank you all again for being with us for this for this Resurrection Sunday. We pray that the rest of your day will be blessed and filled with family, friends, and fellowship. All hearts and minds are satisfied and souls steadfast on Christ. Let us look unto the Lord and be dismissed. And now unto him who's able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his throne with exceeding great joy. To the all-wise Savior be majesty, power, dominion, and glory henceforth now and forevermore. And the people of God said together, amen. Hug somebody and tell them I've got good news. Oh,
Oh, and 